So ladies and gentlemen, for this problem, they're asking us um, to find the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the y-intercept, maximum or minimum, and the domain and range. Whew. All right. So let's first, let's get it out of the way. Let's do the first thing is let's find the axis of symmetry. I think that's the easiest one to find. So the axis of symmetry, remember, is when x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. Right? That's going to be the line that's going to be symmetrical of your parabola. Yes? Of what? There you go. So remember, all quadratics can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So b in my case is going to be a positive 2 over 2 times negative 1, which then leaves me with a negative 1. Right? Now remember, for a quadratic, your negative 1, your axis of symmetry, goes through your vertex. So that means the x coordinate of my vertex is x coordinate of my vertex is negative 1. However, I'm going to leave um, I'm going to leave the y coordinate in a second. I'm going to do that actually uh, um, last. So what I want to do next thing is they ask us. They do say find the information, and then uh, we do actually need to graph them. So to graph this, I'm doing number two. I'm doing the vertex the axis symmetry, the y-intercept, maximum minimum, domain and range, and then we also need to graph them. Now, to go ahead and graph it, the main important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is right now I found the axis symmetry. That's the main important thing you guys want to find. Then we can find the vertex. But when I'm finding the vertex, I'm going to show you how to find the table of values. Because for a lot of them, you have to find the rest of the table of values. So if I take a look at my graph, I have my axis symmetry is at negative 1. That means that line kind of like cuts my parabola in half, right? It is symmetrical about that line. My vertex lands somewhere on this line. So what I'm going to do when I want to create a table of values, I want to pick at least two points to the left and two <coughs> points to the right of the vertex. So I'm going to make an xy table. And I'm going to pick two points to the left and two points to the right. So I'll do negative 2. I uh, so do negative 3, negative 2. Let's pick negative 1 because that's on the vertex. And then I'll do 0 and I'll do 1. All right? So what I'm doing is I'm plugging in these values. I want to figure out negative 2 and negative 3. I want to figure out 0 and 1. The, by picking these values, that's going to help me determine what my graph is going to look like. All right. So what I need to do is I need to plug each one of these in for my value. So I do f of negative 3, which equals negative negative 3 squared minus 2 times negative 3 plus 2. So that gives me a positive 6, which would be 8. So that leaves me a negative 1. So at negative 3, I go down to negative 1. Then I'll do negative 2. Negative, negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. Um, and then at 6, we have, that's a positive 4. So then we have 6. Positive 2. What I do, did I assume do something wrong here? That opens down. Negative, negative 2. Right? All right, let's just do it individually. This one becomes positive 4, so that's a negative 4 plus 4 plus 2. Oh, I don't, well, I don't know. Hold on, I don't know what the vertex. Um, no, that doesn't even make sense. Outside of negative, negative, one. Yeah. negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 times negative is right there. Hmm. All right, let's just go and look at it. So at negative 2. Yeah, but it opens down. Did I type in the thing wrong? Negative x. What? You put the negatives, the y for negative 2 on negative 3. Well, yeah. 
What are you saying? At negative, negative one, two, three, that's at negative one. And then at negative two is at positive two. There we go. OK, that makes sense, because we know it opens down. So then we do, thank you, f of negative one. I just didn't go far enough over. So we have negative, negative one squared minus two times negative one plus two. So for this one, we have two, um, so that becomes four. And then, so we're going to get 3, right? So therefore, I have my three points. Now remember, the axis of symmetry, this is where it equals 3. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the axis of symmetry does what? It cuts your parabola in half, right? So could you evaluate for 0 and 1 again? Yes. But guess what? Can you also just reflect these points over your axis of symmetry? Yes. So I can just go ahead and plot them like that. Or oh, sorry, next one over, right there. Therefore, my graph is going to look something like this. All right. Now again, remember when we evaluate for negative one on the axis of symmetry, and we find out what the vertex is. So my vertex is at negative one three, which we plotted right there. How do we find negative one three? We found the axis of symmetry. And then I plugged in the x value and found the y value, or the f of x value, which was 3. Got that, Dustin? Yeah. So then we need to determine the maximum or minimum. So we need to look at when a is less than 0 or a is greater than 0. When a is less than 0, we have a max. And when a is greater than 0, we have a minimum. So in this point, we look at our a, and our a is negative 1. So therefore, we have a maximum value. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Um, the next thing is we need to determine the y-intercept. So if I look over there, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of did a little sketch with it. But the y-intercept is when what? When our x value equals what? 0. So I need to evaluate when f of x equals 0. So that's negative 0 squared minus 2 times 0 plus 2. Well, it's 0 squared, and then, yes, times a negative 1 would be 0 again. So I end up going to get 0 equals 2. So therefore, my y-intercept is at 0, comma 2, which my graph is trying to be perfect with. And then the last thing we need to determine the domain and range. Remember, for parabolas, our domain is always going to be negative infinity to infinity, right? These are going to keep on expanding. So my domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity, and my range we look at what are the constraints. The constraint is the maximum value, right? You can't have anything that's higher than what your maximum value is. And your maximum value is what? 3. So therefore, my range is from negative infinity to 3. And there you go. That's just figured out all that information. Sean, have any questions?